So let's continue by going back to our event graph. And before we deal with some of the other things, we want to spawn it. So let's deal with that. So we're going to deal with teleport here. We're going to trace forward from camera. If there is a successful hit, what I'm going to do is on true, I will spawn actor from class. And the type will be our teleport locator that we've created, which is this class. We'll drag the trace hit location into our spawn transform. And then we will promote this to a variable. Instead of the blueprint class, what we're actually going to do is we'll call this teleport actor, this new variable. And we will change this to type actor. And this will be an object reference. We'll drag this out to our viewport, say set teleport actor. So now when we've right clicked and it is pressed, we're going to do the trace. If the trace is successful, we're going to spawn the actor and then set it to a variable. When it's released, what we're actually going to do is we're going to get, get the variable and we'll just right click and say convert to validated get, which is the same as saying is valid. Um, so you see this sort of macro up here, here, we'll say false. Uh, so is it released that, so, you know, is it pressed? No. So it's released. We're going to test the validity. We're going to destroy this actor. And then we're going to set this to a sort of null reference. Um, so it's cleared. So I'll group this and say destroy. I'll group this and say trace and spawn teleport. And we have the start of our functionality. So now let's go back into our trace forward from camera and finish up some of this logic. And what we need to do now is an additional test. Um, in this area, where basically we're going to make sure that it is at a proper angle. So after we've said, yes, there is a hit, we want to test, is this basically a wall or a vertical surface, you know, because we only want to spawn it if it's on a flat surface. So we'll drop down our hit result and we'll take the normal and we will break this vector. And the only thing we want is the Z. And we're going, going to ask, is the Z greater than or equal to 0.8? And this is basically testing the, the vertical. Um, I believe it's in radians. And so the vertical is one, the flat is zero. So in this situation, we just need to test, is it greater than this value? So I'm going to bring this in here, assuming it's true. We'll drag this in here. And if it is, if it is incorrect, like if this is a bad value, then we want to make it not visible. So what we can do is we can grab our teleport actor, convert to validated get, drag the false in here. And we're going to say, if we've right clicked and it is visible, you know, we've actually spawned the actor. What we want to do then is say, change visibility the the change teleport visibility that we've created in our blueprint interface and we want to say make visible is false so this is the function we've added or we're going to add here let's actually just do that now uh, we'll right click this in our teleport locator say implement event and we're going to right click and say uh, Uh, set actor hidden in game and make visible is the opposite of what we want. So we're going to use a not bool. It's basically going to flip this Boolean value and make this object hidden in game. Go back to our third person character and then we will copy this return node and say that the hit 
is bad. So we'll hit it. Let's say the hit is not successful. We have just one more thing to do now. And that is off of our false down here where we've traced downwards. And, you know, this is a second, you know, bad trace. We can just copy this value here, drag this in here. And then we will put this is not valid right in here. So basically, again, you know, if we have a bad trace from this downwards vertical trace, which is the one that's out in front of us, uh, we will make it invisible. I'll compile and I'll save. All right, so back in our event graph, we're going to use our event tick, which is something that will happen on every frame. And as you should know, this is something to be very careful with. You don't want to execute huge amounts of logic and event tick. This is a pretty simple line trace, so this is fine, but don't do lots of operations on event tick. It is not good practice. So on our tick, what we will do is we'll grab our teleport actor, right click, convert to validated get. It's important to sort of just test that this is valid. And we will use our trace forward from camera function. If there is a hit, then we want to make the visibility of this spawned actor true, which is what we created up here. So we want to um, drag off here and say sequence. We'll say do once. And we'll say on our teleport actor, change visibility, uh, change teleport visibility. And we're going to say make visible is true. And then we are going to set actor transform of our teleport actor. We're going to pull off of here and drag this trace hit location into our new transform over here. We'll convert the vector to a transform. And then we want the rotation of our player or of the object to be the same as the follow camera, you know, so what we'll do is we'll grab this, we'll say get world rotation. We will break this rotator. We will make a rotator from the Z only. And then we'll actually, we'll unhook this and we will split the struct pin and we'll drag our location into here and we'll drag our rotator into here. So this is our trace on tick section. This is where we are dealing with the teleport. We're spawning it the first time and then we're destroying it when we release. And then here is our right mouse button. And this is where we create or remove on right mouse button. So now let's deal with the final event, which is when we actually execute the transform, or when we execute the teleport. So I'm gonna move this down. And then now this is the final part of the logic. All right, so on our left mouse button, I'm gonna pull out and say get teleport actor. I'll again convert this to a validated get by right clicking and you'll actually just drop down and do that. So I'll drag this in here. And now what I want to do is I want to set world transform of my capsule component. And so I can then get the actor transform. So I'll say get actor transform of our teleport actor. I'll drag this in here. But what I actually, you know, so the, the teleport actor, the way I have it set up right now is I'm saying, get the actor, get the teleport actor location and move the character there. But if you look, the capsule happens at zero, zero. So if I spawn, if I move the character to the capsule location, which is going to be on the floor, the character is going to be in the floor and then be pushed upwards. So what I can do 
is I can split this struct pin. I will pull my capsule component off. I'll say get capsule half height. I will right click this to split the struct pin. I will add this vector. I will make a vector. And then I will add this, this into the Z here. So this is basically taking half the height of this capsule, hence capsule half height, and moving it up vertically and adding that to the location of this. And I will also just drag the rotation from that actor here. I will compile and I'll add a comment by selecting this and then pressing C on the keyboard and saying uh, teleport player on left mouse button. I will compile and I'll save. And the final thing I want to do is I am going to add an event on my teleport that basically spawns a new particle system when I do a successful teleport. So here I will right click, I'll say implement event. And I'm gonna go to the location of my teleport particles. I'm going to duplicate this. I'll, I'll add an underscore success at the end. I'll open this up. And this one, instead of a spawn rate, I'm going to add a spawn burst instantaneous under emitter update. And I'm going to spawn, let's say, 300 particles. Maybe we'll make them a little bit bigger under initialized particles. Let's say they're four to eight. So it's kind of a ring. Or, yeah, let's just do three to five. I'll compile and I'll save. And I also want to make sure that under emitter state, this is set to once instead of infinite. So it doesn't keep happening. Now in my teleport indicator, what I'll say is spawn system at location. And I'll use the gray arrow to use my currently selected particle system and reference it in here and the system template. I'll get my scene root of this actor and say get world location. Drag this in here. Compile, save. And in my third person character, I will get my teleport actor. And we'll call that blueprint interface event, which was called successful teleport. And we should be good to go. Before we test, there's one more thing we need to do. And that is change some of the logic in our tick. Uh, so this false needs to go into this reset node here in the do once. And then our then one needs to go into our set actor transform. We also want to make sure that our line trace distance has a value which we didn't set before. So I set it to 1500. And then let's go into our environment and test. So now we can see when we move around and I'm holding the right mouse button, I can see the indicator in space in front of me. And then when I left mouse button, I can teleport to the location.